Buick certainly churned down some beautiful vehicles over the years. And one of the more handsome ones is the 1939 Buick Special and Century. The lower end, shorter wheelbase vehicles that Buick signed up for the 1939 model year, they came standard with a new look that Buick said was the quote unquote style blazer for 1939. As you can see here in the 1939 Buick brochure, they talk about their style blazer for 1939 in this paragraph talking about an introduction to beauty. It started with the catwalk cooling on the costly built to order racing cars of Europe. Buick engineers were shooting at better aerodynamics, not new styling, but what they touched off will repattern cars everywhere before it's through. Not quite sure if that was the case for the 1939 Buick or not, but the 39 Buick, I will tell you, definitively had an influence on one of the most seminal vehicles of the 1990s from General Motors. Can you guess what that is? If you said the 1992 Buick Skylark, then you picked correctly. Note here that its bird beak front does bear a passing resemblance to the 1939 Buick, and that was because it was styled based on the 1939 Buick, if you can believe it. Although perhaps that Skylark took the styling of the 39 Buick to an extreme and wasn't really as graceful as this 39 Buick was in, well, more ways than one, let's say. Regardless, as I mentioned, the 1939 Buicks were indeed handsome, and there were four Buicks in the model lineup. There was the Limited, the Roadmaster, the Century, and the Special. The Century and the Special were at the lower end of the range and were called the Series 60 and Series 40 models, respectively. The Limited and the Roadmaster were at the upper end of the range and were called the Series 90 and Series 80 vehicles respectively the limited was an absolutely enormous vehicle riding atop a 140 inch wheelbase and buick actually advertised it as an eight passenger four-door touring sedan and it had these little jump seats behind the front seat that you could fold out to put passengers in kind of similar to what many limousines would do in subsequent years there also was a six-passenger Model 91 Limited that didn't have those jump seats, but still had a ton of room in the interior. These Limiteds were about 220 inches in overall length, so not quite the longest vehicles ever produced, as Chrysler's 1973 Imperial was 235 inches in overall length, and other vehicles in the 50s, like the 58 to 60 Continental, would certainly be longer, but they were enormous and certainly enormous on the inside with tons of passenger space. And if you got a Limited or the Lower End Roadmaster, you got Buick's 320 cubic inch Dynaflash straight eight cylinder engine making 141 horsepower. Doesn't sound like a lot today, but back in the day, that was actually quite good for a straight eight engine of that size. One down from the Limited in the lineup was the Series 80 Roadmaster. That was a six-passenger vehicle, a little bit shorter in wheelbase, as opposed to the 140-inch wheelbase that the Limited had. The Roadmasters rode atop a 133-inch wheelbase. Then, further down in the lineup for Buick were the Series 60 Century, which rode atop a 126-inch wheelbase, and the Series 40 Special, which was the entry-level price leader. The base price on the Series 40 Special, which rode atop just a 120-inch wheelbase, was under $1,000 in a number of configurations, around $890 to $950 for most of the versions of the Special. And the Special was the volume leader for 1939, selling 160 to 170,000 units in that particular model year. For purposes of comparison, the Limited sold around 1,500 to 2,000 units, so much, much fewer units of the Limited were produced than the Special. Now, interestingly, on the Series 40 Special and Series 60 Century was where Buick Engineering made a significant goof when they introduced these vehicles for the 1939 model year, despite what they alleged was sufficient testing. And that is that the Series 40 and Series 60 Special and Century have a shortened frame. More specifically, there are no frame rails behind the rear axle to support the trunk area. This was in contrast to the Series 80 and Series 90 Roadmaster and Limited vehicles that had that full frame all the way back to the back bumper. So when you selected a Series 40 or 60 Buick, 
you got a shortened frame from what was put in the Series 80 and Series 90. And it wasn't long before Buick discovered that this wasn't the greatest decision. You can see in this picture here from the 1939 brochure that Buick is touting that only they have the Buick Oil full float ride. And notice that the frame terminates right there at the rear coil springs and at the rear axle. There is no frame behind that. But of course, the car body extends past that point. Just a side note, I do think it's interesting to look at the shock absorbers on this vehicle. Notice they're mounted to the frame here as opposed to the more typical and what we would be used to now, stand-up coils that look like pistons that would expand and contract. But that was how the suspension worked in 1939. So what happened as a result? Well, if customers overloaded the trunk or tried to put a bumper hitch and then tow something, with this vehicle, the sheet metal invariably failed. And as a consequence, Buick engineers came up with a few different solutions, and the dealer body did as well, basically to reinforce this area underneath the trunk with some form of angle iron or extended frame rails to try to fix the issue. Because you can imagine customers weren't very happy, and it wasn't an easily repairable condition if the floor pan caved in in the trunk, for instance. So if you bought a Series 40 Special in 1939, not only did you get a smaller Dynaflash 8-cylinder engine that was 248 cubic inches versus 320 cubic inches in the other vehicles, you got a shortened frame as well. By the way, the Century came standard with a 320 cubic inch Dynaflash V8. Hence its name Century. It could break 100 miles an hour, allegedly. It was a short wheelbase Buick that had the bigger inline 8-cylinder engine. In any case, I digress, is this design was one of the largest failures in Buick engineering history. You can imagine that customers were certainly not happy that they paid almost $1,000, <laughs> believe that or not, $1,000 bought you a Buick back in 1939, but they got a vehicle that just couldn't tow anything and couldn't hold very much junk in the trunk in that model year. Buick would subsequently revise the frame very quickly and fix it and would never repeat the same mistake. And often in later years, Buicks actually would have thicker gauge frame rails than their competitive sister divisions in the 1960s and even into the early 1970s, really because of their chief engineer who believed that more sturdy frames just made for better riding and driving cars. And frankly, I think he was correct. But for 1939, that individual wasn't there. His name was Leo Kintig, by the way. And instead... If you bought a Series 40 or 60 Buick, you may have had an issue that certainly would turn you off from buying a subsequent Buick. Thanks again for watching this video of the 1939 Buick Series 40 and Series 60. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you.